Mr. Chairman, uh, first of all, I congratulate uh, my friend and uh, senior member of this House, uh, D. Raja, for bringing forward this matter for debate. Of course, I don't agree with him at all. And many of the things he has said is not true. For instance, he has said that we are in amongst the minority of member countries still voting against the resolution in the UN. The fact of the matter is, the United States is a large country with a population of almost 350 million people. They are, in fact, having capital punishment. In fact, the largest number of executions per population uh, is in the United States. So it, the Russians, Russia is also having capital punishment. All Arab countries are having uh, capital punishment. Iran has a uh, capital punishment. And the country with which his party, D. Raja's party, has fraternal relations, that is China, they have capital punishment. <laughs> He's not able to persuade China and he wants to persuade <laughs> India. <laughs> I do, and I think I support their capital punishment, and I think it should be applied to you also. <laughs> now, now, so, no, no, it's not a question. It's a question you're... You have not been able to point out a single important country which has abolished it except some crazy liberal countries in, the, in Europe. The fact of the matter is that we have known that our criminal system is either retributory, that is you take a retribution, or it is reformatory. Reformatory you have reserved for juveniles and even on that we have now made an amendment that if it's a heinous crime like murder, then the age will be reduced to 16. Second thing is that the Supreme Court has considered this several times and they have said that capital punishment is constitutional. And therefore, the question of its abolition because it's unconstitutional it doesn't arise at all. The third thing is that the Indian Supreme Court has number of times said only in the rarest of rare cases will there be capital punishment. And the number of executions is very minimal. And consequently, I would say that we think that in view of the fact that this safeguard is there, that the Supreme Court will only give in the rarest of rare cases, and the fact that democracies like the United States and India, uh, uh, communist countries, uh, dictatorial countries, uh, countries which don't have democracy, they all are unanimous saying that we need capital punishment. Now, the issue therefore is that why should we consider this at all? It's a part of a fashionable international uh, movement of NGOs that it should be abolished. And sometimes the Congress party itself gets confused on this because they will hang uh, Abzal Guru but the killers of Rajiv Gandhi, they want let free. They don't want them, them to be subject to capital punishment, even though the Supreme Court said that it is the rarest of rare cases that four people of the LTT should be given capital punishment. And Congress party leadership has written to the governor and the president that they should be given mercy. So I think, therefore, this is a futile debate. In my opinion, India is not going to change. We are going to have capital punishment. But the safeguards that are necessary, the Supreme Court has already laid down. There is no need for this bill. While appreciating his effort, we say it should be rejected. दुनिया में इतने अकूट संपत्ति पॉलिटिशियन के पास होता है, इस पर कोई बिल होगा कि नहीं? ये बाबाओं के पास इतना अकूट संपत्ति पंद्रह साल में कहाँ से आ जाता है? इस पर कोई बिल होगा कि नहीं?